Oh, hello. Do you think that Big Brother is watching you? Or that the Illuminati are planning to take over the world? Have you had an encounter with a space alien today? If the answer to those questions is yes, then grab your hat. This is tinfoil hat time. Welcome back to tinfoil hat time. Well, uh, you know, I've been keeping an eye on uh, Firefox for a while, and uh, I don't watch the Mozilla Foundation a whole lot. But some interesting things are, are starting to brew, and I'm wondering, are they good things, or are they things worthy of discussion with a hat? I didn't even hear about what we're going to talk about today until a uh, discussion with some uh, cool Linux geeks last night. But we're going to go ahead and dive on in. What is up with Mozilla? That's what I want to ask today. Now, Mozilla is not a company I pay a whole lot of attention to. And uh, hopefully I'm wrong about all this. Every now and again, the tinfoil hat's just, you know, security precaution. Um, and I didn't hear about this clicks... Uh, issue uh, until last night and so um, if you did happen to watch the um, uh, the uh, Big Daddy Linux show last night you, you know you had some heard some pretty strong opinions on, on all sides on on this issue but, but at that point in time I had not had a chance to even read any articles so I spent some time today looking this up a little bit more detail so I could come in and have an informed decision and it makes me question what is going on over there at Mozilla um, there's some things that they're doing that aren't seeming to make a lot of sense maybe they will in the long run I just don't know it's kind of like what I'm starting to see is the type of stuff that happens after a company is taken over it usually happens a few years after the company's taken over. So I don't know if some big person has moved into position, moved out of position. I really don't know. I don't know what their stance was with uh, integrating the DRM. Now, I did find some articles are saying, you know, we hate it, but we got to implement it. Otherwise, people will just dump Firefox. I, I agree with that decision. There's times you got to make a compromise. That might be it. Um, but as I started to research and read a little bit more on this stuff, I started to have some more questions about what's going on and does it make sense in the scope of Mozilla's entire foundation. And so with that, that's kind of what we're going to talk about today. And so I wanted to just kind of jump in with some with some articles. So first we're going to actually consider quite a bit about what Mozilla themselves say. So I want to start out with the Mozilla Manifesto, which are the principles that guide the mission of Mozilla. And uh, a lot of these are very consistent. Now, of course, um, I use Firefox as my primary browser. Um, I use Chromium, uh, not Chrome, but Chromium as, a, uh, as my auxiliary browser. And then for other things that I need, I'll use Midori or Conqueror or whatever else works for whatever distro I'm on. I'm not super concerned. A lot of people ask me about the Brave browser. I'm really, the more I look into Brave browser, the more I go, hmm, not for me. Um, for a few reasons. One of them is um, several of us on YouTube, obviously, even though we talk about the ad apocalypse, um, we do still make some money on ads. Is it should it be our primary way? No, but it's it's some, you know. And the amount of money that I can make running ads on YouTube, uh, it actually pays my food bill at this point in time. So this effectively allows me to eat. And then I use the um, other money coming in for other line items in my budget, but I make enough on that. The problem with the Brave browser is, not only does it indiscriminately block ads so you can't choose where to display them and where to not display them, but they will also inject into things and display ads from their ad network over top of where I do. So if you visit one of my websites that runs ads to help support it, which is, by the way, a very useless way of running ads unless you have millions of dollars, uh, you know, millions of site visitors a day. Then if you visit that site with Brave, they will literally take my ads out that I get paid for displaying and inject their own ads into it. I think that's wrong. Unless they're going to pay me money to do that, I think that's wrong. And because of that, 
I'm not really behind Brave Browser. On top of that, I considered running Brave as a browser uh, when I did my Android build, but the only way I could get a copy of it is to either A, through shady looking uh, um, Android app repos, or B, directly from Google Play. Defeats the purpose. <laughs> okay. I'm not putting Google services on that phone. So you have that. So my primary browser is Firefox and my primary browser has been Firefox. I want to say, oh boy, when did I start with that? I mean, over a decade ago. I mean, I think Firefox is my primary browser when I was in grad school over a decade ago. And so I've used Firefox for a long time. And as I've watched it grow into the monstrosity it seems to have become, I have become concerned about several things. Not enough that I'm going to abandon ship, particularly since I am like on a sinking vessel in the middle of nowhere and, and there's, there's a shaky raft on one side and the East India Trading Company on the other, and I'm not sure I support either, okay? And so I could jump ship into a completely undeveloped browser or I could jump ship into Chrome. I, neither one seems like a good option to me. And so I'm gonna stick with Firefox. But I started to watch as they implement crash report um, telemetry. I started to watch as they implemented uh, Firefox account so you can sync stuff in and they're getting a little bit more aggressive with that stuff. There's even some articles, I forget if we're going to look at them, we might, where they're looking at offering some of the services they have as freemium, meaning that you can use a small portion of it for free and then over a certain amount you need to start paying for it. And basically what happens is Firefox is just starting to look like all of the other companies that I take a big strong stand against. And so looking at their manifesto, uh, they have 10 guiding principles. The first is the internet is an integral part of modern life, a key component in education, communication, collaboration, business, entertainment, society as a whole. Beautiful, no objections. None at all. Internet is a global public resource that must remain open and accessible. This is the thing that I did not see Firefox making a huge stink about the DRM uh, requirements. And they should have because the DRM, the, the DRM standard from WC3 directly attacks an open and accessible Internet because that DRM means that, oh, yeah, I can't watch something here because I, my account and my residency is in another country. That's not an open Internet. That's a closed Internet. Internet, the Internet must enrich the lives of individual human beings. That depends on what you put into it. If you can extract anything out of the Internet, good or bad. Uh, Ravi Zacharias says improved technology gives us an improved means to reach our deteriorating ends. Uh, take that for what you will. Um, number four, individual security and privacy on the internet is fundamental and must not be treated as optional. And we are going to hover right on that one most of today. Um, but we're going to keep going now. Individuals must have the ability to shape the internet and their own experiences on it. Okay, maybe that's something we discuss a little bit more detail. The effectiveness of the internet as a public resource depends on the interoperability of protocols, data, formats, content, innovation, and decentralized participation worldwide. Okay, so how effective is it is depends upon uh, depends upon a variety of, of protocols. Okay, I agree with that. And there's actually a friend of mine who, who discusses this every now and again with collecting and, and archiving old data files. What happens if they become so old that the data files themselves are not openable? And some people talk about that where you can't open old Office documents in, in LibreOffice, for example. I've never encountered that, and I have a ton of old Office documents. They open just fine for me. I might have to do, do some formatting shenanigans here and there, but that's okay and probably to be expected. Free and open source software promotes the development of the internet as a public resource. That, that one is actually a little under attack by what we're talking about today. Transparent community-based processes promote participation, accountability, and trust. We're going to look at that one a little bit today. Transparency, accountability, and trust. Commercial involvement in the development of the internet brings many benefits. A balance between commercial profit and public benefit is critical. And I agree with that. There's a lot that good companies can bring to the table. There's a lot that good companies can't bring to the table. And magnifying the public benefit aspect 
of the internet is an important goal worthy of time, attention, and commitment. All right, so next let's go ahead and address this question. First is we have to realize that Firefox already does collect data, okay? Um, it is a reality that Firefox already collects data and we have to recognize that. that this isn't like what we're gonna talk about today with this clicks issue that's kind of started this whole mess. That takes things too far, but let's go ahead and have a look at Firefox's privacy notice because you guys should be reading these anyway. And if people said you're reading Firefox, you know what? Let's go ahead and have a look at the terms of service. Make sure you've read it. Make sure you understand what's in here. So by default, Firefox shares this type of data, interaction data and technical data. Okay, so this is basically the, the type of computer, the, the machine ID, you know, all a bunch of stuff that could in, indeed identify, if not you, your computer. They can collect this stuff no matter where you are using it, whether desktop, iOS, Android, etc. You can easily opt out. Now, if you have a, I think I missed a spot. Nope, oh, okay. Um, basically here, if you have not opted out, then Firefox is going to send interaction data uh, so basically all the stuff you see on the screen here, uh, the, the interactions with Firefox, the number of open tabs, the number of web pages, pages visited, the number and types of installed add-ons and session lengths, Firefox features offered by Mozilla or our partners such as interaction with Firefox search or search partner referrals. So that type of data is sent to Firefox by default. Technical data. Firefox sends data about your Firefox version and language, device operating systems, hardware configuration, Memory, basic information about crashes and errors, outcome of automated processes like updates, safe browsing activation uh, to us. When Firefox sends data to us, your IP address is temporarily collected as part of our server logs, okay? So that is your default. Now, that's your default. If you are unaware of this and you wanna turn this off, let me show you how to do that. Come up to your top of your Firefox, pull down your hamburger menu, hit your preferences, and then under, is it under advanced data choices, you wanna disable these two options. So enable a Firefox health report and allow Firefox to send backlog crash reports on your behalf. You wanna turn those two off. Now, if the thing still crashes, it will still give you the prompt that you could do a one-time send without a problem. Um, so make sure you do that. Um, then there's some other stuff in here as well. So I always turn that kind of stuff off. Now, when you install it, while it is enabled by default, there is, it does run the banner at the bottom of the, of the window that will allow you to click there to disable those types of data collection. If you ignore those buttons or you hit the X, then it will keep it on by default. And I disagree with that. I think that they should, sure, maybe give you a bigger, more annoying pop-up to say, please click here to turn on rather than turn on by default. If you miss the little bar at the bottom, then it stays on that because that's the current default. So let's have a look at other information. So uh, default search provider. So when you first turn on Firefox, it will use your IP address to set a default search provider based on your country. Again, I'd recommend you change that. You can do that by coming up to the top pull down your button down here, change search settings, and then you'll usually see a whole bunch more junk in here. I removed everything. I keep start page and I keep Google. Um, those are the other ones I keep. And the only reason I keep Google is occasionally I cannot get something that I want on start page, so I'll jump over to Google if I need to. Otherwise, I remove everything else. I don't want Bing, I don't want Yahoo, I don't want Amazon, I don't want Wiki, I don't want ask.com, which is like the biggest data tracking company in the world, uh, possibly behind Google. Um, and so there's, you know, there's a whole lot of a whole lot of other options. Now you can add cool things. So like on my Christian site, I actually have Bible Gateway in here because it allows me to throw a verse up in the top bar, click the button, and it will load up the verse rather than go to an internet search. So there's stuff like that that you can do. Um, and so what you do is just select the search engines that you want, and then you can set your default up here. So if I do any search anywhere from the main address bar or the search bar, it will search directly through start page. And of course they don't log that data or store that. So that's what I'm doing there. Now, a warning, if you are on Linux Mint, uh, this is Joe Collins' big beef with Linux Mint. Uh, and, and is that and a lot of the Ubuntu distros is they do not give you a stock Firefox. They've manipulated your Firefox. And so if I come down here and I want to uh, add new, uh, where's it at? 
I can't remember where it is. I mean, it's completely changed around. Um, um, da, 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 da. There is a place to set. Let's try that again. Let's come down here. Change search settings. Okay, add more search engines. That's right. That's what it was right down there. Okay, now, what you'll see when you click that button is you come over here to a Linux Mint page where you can add your various search engines. Uh, this drives me crazy because, again, Mint is still messing around under the hood of Firefox. And this is why, check out Joe Collins' channel. You'll find a video on there and installing stock Firefox. Uh, which is probably a better option. I don't like this. Um, and actually, I have a video on how to install search engines without bypassing this, and I can't remember what it is. It's, uh, I want to say you do an add-ons, and then you need to do like a search as well. It's a special search function you need. Um, I can't remember. No, that's not it. Um, but anyway, I have an old video here talking about exactly how to put better search engines on here bypassing the Linux Mint. That's a beef I have with Linux Mint is that they have uh, co-opted this. So basically this should take you to a page just like the get new add-ons page. Uh, in fact, it, you might actually be able to get to it on the add-ons page. Let's see. Uh, let me try this search engines. Hmm. No, I'd have to look it up. Um, but anyway, there is. Uh, it's and you can. It's just something you can hit in the URL bar at the top, and it'll take you to uh, the default page. That's a problem though with uh, with Linux Mint, is they have co-opted your search, add more search engines page to one of their pages, which again does a lot of the same thing. It will link into their ad networks, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Um, I'd rather just support them directly. Um, but that is that is that. All right, so uh, relevant content. Um, so your location data, um, this is, um, so basically that what they're saying is here is they're not sending all that location, all that data out, except if you were to allow that option. So if you use these features in Firefox, location, notifications, which that's another thing that drives me crazy. They implemented those features. I would have been better if they just didn't implement them, okay? So if you come over here to about config, and I don't think I've done this on this this one yet, um, and you do a geolocation. Uh, let's see. So geo enabled. Okay, so I did actually do this. So geo enabled means that if you take this, find this geo enabled down here, and you double click it, so you have the false option. Nothing can collect your location data. Um, again, it's on by default. I wish it wasn't, but it's on by default. And I think I also probably have notification one as well. So web notifications enabled. I turn that one to false. That prevents you from getting the little pop-up. This website would like to send you notifications. No! I don't want you to send me notifications through Firefox. So um, I turn those off as well. So that way you have a little bit more privacy and a little bit more security with this. Of course, um, that's also if you do want to um, remove, um, if you do want to remove like JavaScript or something, you do the same thing. Come down here, disable JavaScript enabled. I don't make a big deal about that. But anyway, um, Firefox does collect a lot of data, not only for themselves, but for the various add-ons that you use. You have to watch out that the add-ons have their own notifications or their own privacy policies. Uh, you have your Firefox account has its own. Of course, with that, they will store a bunch of your personal data, including your email address and the password you create. So keep that in mind that um, Firefox does itself collect a lot of data. At least the site is very open and transparent about what they are doing when they do that. So let's go ahead and start chattering about what brought me to this topic of the internet. Clicks. So this is a clicks experiment. So to be clear, they are doing this with 1% of population that downloads Firefox exclusively in Germany. No idea why. 
And so basically it is a plugin. So you can, it's installed by default on that 1%. And I'm not sure if it's randomly selected or whatever, but it's installed by default on that 1%. You have the option to go in and remove it. So you can go in and remove it. It's an add on. So you can in theory kill it. My argument and what I'm going to contend for is no, you shouldn't do that kind of stuff by default. Maybe put a big old annoying pop up that says, would you like to install this and take part in our awesome experiment to collect everything that you do and give it to another company? Because that's what they're doing. So let's go ahead and have a look at this thing. Um, so the clicks experiment with data collection. So they plan to launch a new Firefox experiment next week in Germany for users who download the browser from the organization's website. I wonder if the, if us Linux users grabbing it directly from the repository would not be affected. I don't know. And here's one of the challenges. As I was looking up a lot of this data, Mozilla is notorious for sounding like a politician. They write a thousand letter, uh, a thousand word article without telling you a thing. It's got lots of words. It says a lot. It just doesn't say anything. And so you have that kind of general trend going. And so it says Mike, uh, Mozilla has a business relationship with Clix, GMBH, um, maintains its own web browser as well as extensions. Their relationship uh, began when the company added Clix as a social provider in Firefox. Clix was launched early in 2017 as a Firefox test pilot experiment adds real-time results and suggestions to Firefox's address bar. If you type weather Amsterdam, for instance, a weather forecast is displayed directly in the address bar. Now, this is good for the people wanting this sort of functionality without using Google. Because as I, I'm pretty sure last I knew, start page will not do this. Um, I think, any DuckDuckGo users? I think DuckDuckGo does do this. Am I correct on that? Let me know. Um, but basically, it'll give you this, and then it'll give you a bunch of other things. They announced today on its German press blog, it plans to run Clicks Experiment in the coming weeks. Experiment will only run in Germany, and for less than 1% of users who download Firefox from Mozilla's website, these users will have Clicks activated as an add-on automatically, according to Mozilla. Mozilla notes that it is necessary to transfer address bar contents to Click servers to power the functionality. This means essentially that anything that is entered into the address bar, either automatically or manually, is transferred to Clicks. In other words, users who are selected for participation are opted in automatically to data collection. Clicks runs cleanup routines. This is the funny one that is inconsistent with Clicks own statements. Clicks runs cleanup routines, according to Mozilla, that ensure the sensitive information is not transferred. The company deletes IP address furthermore and does not create user browsing profiles either. Uh, Mozilla Firefox users who don't want to use Clicks may deactivate the add-on or disable it instead. So loading the about and then they just give you the instructions on, on how to, to do that. Okay, so here we have a page that offers information on clicks and the removal. We are going to go and have a look at that in a minute. So here is this author's take. Firefox users are probably more privacy conscious than any, any other browser users, with the exception of Tor, uh, Tor browser probably. Browser is less privacy invasive than Google Chrome and, for instance, only offers plenty of settings and options to further improve privacy. Mozilla started to change its stance on data collection in the past year or so, however. Opting users in automatically is something I am not fond of. I don't know whether uh, Firefox installations with clicks added them to, uh, to them will inform the user about this behavior. I think at the very least, Mozilla uh, could do to prevent a... Um, a privacy disaster. So um, I will remind you uh, what is in their manifesto. The individual security and privacy on the internet are fundamental and must not be treated as optional. Yet 1% of users in Germany are being automatically opted in to a data collection protocol. Now, we had a discussion of this last night. And if you watched um, Big Daddy Linux last night, uh, a few of us had some very different opinions and views on this. And um, 
one person argued specifically that said that, hey, this is good because it gives us more information about the user Linux user base. And I disagree because those of us on Linux using Firefox are doing it for privacy. We're going to know to turn it off and they're still going to get polluted data anyway. Because all of us privacy guys are going to disable this crap and they're not going to get useful data. But this is not about collecting data. That is what I did not know last night. And I know I'm not sure um, the person who took the most opposition with me knew that last night either. I'm not sure because this is from Click's own website. And this is the English version, of course, uh, because I don't read German. Sorry, my apologies. Deeper insights with it. We respect your privacy and aim to protect it. Just like Equihax. Clix does not collect or store any personal data. I disagree and I'm going to show you why. Our transparency cockpit, sounds very ominous, was built to give you insight into which data is generated when using the Clix browser. It displays the data we receive when you start typing a search term into the address bar or when you visit a website. The open transparency cockpit, select the responsive option in the Q menu on the top right corner of the browser window or type abs uh, about transparency into the address bar. The following tab table explains the different type of data. So they don't have the English translations up. So I can't read all this. Some of you guys might be able to, but this is the data it is collecting. It is not as ominous as Windows 10 data for sure, but it is still, uh, it is still a problematic thing. Some of these you can figure out what they do, of course. Okay. There's a lot of data this is collecting. Whole lot of data this is collecting. Even more data this is collecting. Maybe it is as much as Windows 10. All right. So that is the information that this group is collecting through integrating this. So Firefox, which specifically states in its manifesto, individual security and privacy on the internet are fundamental and must not be treated as optional. Firefox is now putting 1% of people who download this in this country opted in to extreme quantities of data testing. Mozilla, what are you doing? What are you doing, Mozilla? All right, so that is a fundamental question I have. What is going on? Okay, so let's see. I think I had another one. Um, here, is a, uh, here is some more specifically from Firefox. Um, let's see, so how to use it, what it does. So you can type in information. It's going to give you links. Um, uh, let's see, disable location sharing, disable or uninstall, data privacy for Firefox with clicks. Firefox shares the following data with clicks to provide functionality, improve performance and clicks feature for everyone. Search queries and web page data. This includes text you type in the address bar, queries you send to a certain search engines, and data about web pages you visit, interactions with those pages, and mouse movements, scrolls, and time spent. So if I'm using DuckDuckGo, StartPage, iXQuick, or any one of the other privacy-centric systems because I do not want my search terms recorded, too bad! Firefox said, nope, you 1% that are using that, we're going to send your search queries correctly to clicks. Even if you're using Google, if I'm using Tor and for some reason have put this on, they're still collecting this data. They're sending the search queries, even if you're using a, a privacy centric system to this other company. The interaction data, this includes the interactions with specific fields and buttons. Translation, if you enter data into a form, that data is being sent to Firefox. All right. Includes your interactions with specific fields and buttons in the clicks feature. Data is used to be an identifier allowing clicks to understand performance over time. Firefox shares the following data with Mozilla to better understand interactions between Firefox and the clicks features. Interaction data includes the counts of visitors to each search engine pages and which search engines you use. Okay. 
So that is a lot of data collection from a company that's, that says in their manifesto that security and privacy on the internet are fundamental and must not be treated as optional. What do you guys think of that? With the freemium uh, services, so this one here I'm not nearly as concerned on, but it does still, eh, I guess it scratches some heads. So basically freemium, if you're not a, a computer user of the 90s, uh, I'm not sure if this is still around as much, but you'd get the product for free, but then to use it to its full extent, you'd have to pay for it. In this case, we're kind of doing the same thing. And again, this makes sense to me that, that you know they want to have cloud services available, things like that. And of course, they can't give unlimited space for those. So basically, you get some basic free account service, and then there's some extra boost to it that is uh, that is paid. And I think that that's not a bad idea at all. It would help bring in some some revenue. And I think in in many ways, I would trust Firefox, like Mozilla, rather for with a lot of my data before I trust Microsoft or Google for sure. Um, so if I were looking for something like this, I, I would consider Mozilla before I'd consider some other ones. Um, that's for sure. But at the same token, um, eh, I wouldn't really you know, do them otherwise. Uh, but basically, they're, they're kind of looking at that, that type of stuff. Um, let's see. Oh, this was a neat one, too. Um, the next one is is the Mozilla Information Trust Initiatives. This just sounds too close getting into politics. Once we start talking about a tech company getting involved in battling fake news, I just start thinking Facebook, and then I just get all glossy over my eyes and go, okay, let's walk away. So we have this privacy data collection. We have 100K to Antifa. We have the Mozilla Information and Trust Initiative, which is, th this article is so vague. I've researched this article on every front I can possibly find, and I can't find any information about it. And of course, the freemium. We got four weird things that seem to be all go consistently against what their manifesto says. This just seems weird to me. Because it's like, what are, like, I mean, if you looked at how Facebook was trying to battle these, it was all people of one political persuasion declaring what was fake news. Uh, no, I don't buy that. I don't buy that at all. Um, it doesn't matter which persuasion you're on. Um, what What's defined as fake news? Anything not spit out by CNN, Fox, NBC, ABC? Or is it fake news if you don't agree with it? Is it fake news if it's against your candidate? See, this whole fake news narrative is way too political. It's way too political. Firefox or Mozilla, I'm going to keep doing that. I apologize. It's Mozilla's organization. Mozilla, stay out of it. Just stay out of it. Let them all do their thing. Stay out. Because you know what? It's not consistent with your manifesto. Okay? <clears throat> Share and shape the internet based on their own experiences on it. If I want to write a parody and forget to tell you it's a parody, no, I didn't. Mine says it's a parody, yo. If I want to write a parody and not tell you it's a parody, that should mean my prerogative. If I want to write The Onion, you know what? The Onion and Babylon B, that's fake news, people. But when somebody comes out with information that's embarrassing for a politician and they want to brand that as fake news to hide it, that's dangerous. So Mozilla, stay out of the fake news business. Let the political guys get all involved in that. Who are you to define what is misinformation? Come on. Um, and especially since on this, if you read this article, I've read this article. I've read everything this links to. I still have no idea what they're doing. I am clueless. Is this a program? Are they going to filter things off of their site? Is it a submission place? Is it a search? I have no idea. I have no clue what they're doing. This thing is, I don't even know how many words. How many words is this article? Let's see how many words this article is. And they've said nothing. In fact, every article I've looked up on this thing have all said the very same thing. They said, we have no idea what this means. We're clueless as to what this means. What does this mean? We don't know what this means. Nobody seems to know what this means. But I'm going to go ahead and do a word count on this thing. That is 748 words and they don't say anything. <laughs> 748 word article that says nothing. Um, but Mozilla, stay out of the misinformation campaign. It's too politically charged. Just stay out. 
Stay out. Stay out. Okay, it looks to me like Mozilla has become somebody's puppet. That's my concern. That's my concern. I have no idea what Mozilla's doing. They seem to be doing weird stuff. I just don't get it. I don't get it at all. They're gone crazy. They've gone mad. Oh, I've gone and done it. I went on fire. I went on fire. All right. Yes, Mozilla's gone crazy. They are seem to be a puppet master. Like some puppet masters got their fingers all up there and cause them to do this. Ooh, let's see what happens if we turn on collection. So let's see if their user base freaks out. We'll do it really small right here. And I get 1% of Germany is probably not very big. But then what if that thing moves to 1% of everybody? 1% of this, 1% of that. And then let's start. Uh, it's It's crazy. Hey, what happens if we donate $100,000 to domestic terrorists in the United States? Huh, that wouldn't be divisive. Not at all, not at all, not at all. Ha ha ha. Either somebody's trying to kill it or what. I have no idea, but what they're doing doesn't make any sense. They're not making any sense. Data collection goes against their, uh, their DRM. They got the freemium stuff. They got um, misinformation, getting involved. Why, why getting involved in misinformation stuff? Let the people on Facebook figure it out. That seems to be the only place I'm seeing it. Um, and then you got... <sighs> They've gone mad. They've gone mad. Oh, boy. Oh, boy. Oh, boy.